Hi and welcome back. This is Jody. I was playing. I'm not sure what is called Buck I CTF or Buck K CTF 2023. It's a very nice CTF. Simple graphics, maybe geeky graphics, and questions and challenges were very fun. We and our team are playing this. Me and our team, or my team and I are playing. This we are kind of in a good position among all the teams. We are somewhere okay, 18, good enough. And we are not professionals. But one challenge catch my eye and wanted to share it with you guys. That is this replace me. Where is my pen? It says I knew I shouldn't have gotten a cheap phone. Nothing else. And a dist download file not too many solves i will talk about this later and even it's easy so let's have a look and see why an easy uh challenge do have something like a medium challenge number of solves let's check ah uh, no information so we have to jump and start testing by ourselves let me make this a little bit larger okay cd temp mk mk dive bctf cd bctf and move from downloads this here now i have the file six megabyte something i shouldn't have bought a got a cheap phone hmm. the first thing we always do is checking with the file command if you have a unix system mac or linux or a unix you can go with file any file and it will tell you what file this is oh this is an android boot image kernel and ram disk with this page size but this command line very interesting so we have a boot image which boots an android phone but this was cheap and had some issues where is the flag we always hear that android phones work with the linux so they have a linux kernel what exactly does this mean an android phone is a computer and most of the cases an arm based computer a linux kernel boots this arm computer then understands all the hardware drivers whatever you need does calling understands the communication chips and everything but we have a linux kernel just like any normal uh, computer which uses linux when linux wants to boot you have the linux kernel and you need some init ram disk when linux boots if you know about lpic if don't you can follow my lpic series they are completely free and you will know how the linux boots up when linux boots the kernel starts loading but it needs to understand about these drivers for example even to be able to read the disk if you have a disk with your programs driver whatever the linux should know about it so when the computer wants to boot the linux kernel loads an init ram disk it's like a virtual disk in the memory linux boots reads the initial data from here even if needed a driver to access how to access the disk and everything how to start the touch screen so you can give your code whatever and when the first stage is up then it can switch back to this real disk you have so the combination of this Linux disk and init RAM are the thing that lets your computer to boot up. And that's why this challenge do have uh, fewer than others solve. If I can, I will record this one and will tell the trick about this one too. But the point is many people, as soon as they see this Android boot image kernel and RAM disk, they say, okay, 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 I will go to the next one but not me and not you. I used to work with this. These are very fun. You have a, a general command for them, a boot image. If you just run it, it will tell you that 
you can manipulate Android boot images, manipulate your Android boot image. So you can extract your boot image from your phone, manipulate it using this command and some other tools. When satisfied, again, pack it, put it on your phone and you will have your super customized uh, image for yourself and you have lots of new knowledge. If you want to use it, a boot image dash i shows information. It says, okay, this is the image size. This is the kernel size. So from my 6.21 megabyte file, 5.7 is the kernel and less than half a meg is the RAM disk. This is more interesting for me because here you have what the kernel do have access to when booting up. So the flag should be here. If I want to extract it, I would go with a boot image, extract the dist. It will tell you, okay, I've written the config to boot image config, extracted kernel to Z image and extracted the RAM disk to init or the image. If you are familiar with Linux, even if you check your boot directory, you will have a Z image, which is your kernel and uh, an init or the image, which is your RAM. <coughs> and each of the kernels will have one RAM for themselves. You can check this. File Z image is a Linux kernel ARM boot executable. This is gzipped compressed data. Again, if you know about LPIC, uh, the RAM disk, which kernel reads in the beginning and understands whatever it needs to boot up the remaining of the system, which is the whole system, uh, is a gzipped file. So same comes from the file command, gzipped compressed data. Let's extract data from it. I will create an init directory uh, because you cannot directly gunzip it. It says unknown suffix. So we'll ignore it. This is the gunzip command. So I will copy the init rd to init init rd image jz then we will go to the init rd we have it here g unzip this one now i'm unzipped it i have a larger file which is init rd image if i say with the file this is interesting now it's a cpio archive what cpio does is it gets lots of files and directories and put them in a large file. Then you gzip this file, so you have a file containing all your files and directories zipped. Normally gzip does not combine files in one, just uh, pushes a big file into a smaller mix. Uh, what is it called? Compresses, compresses a file. This is how most of Unix commands work. They do one thing and they do it great. So gzip compresses one file. CPIO combines many files in one file without compression. So we CPIO them, whatever we need in our memory for the kernel to boot in one file, then gzip it. Now we gunzipped it. Now we need to un-CPIO it. It's called uh, we have to cat the file, give it to the CPIO, create directories, be verbose, show what you are doing, and create all the files. Now we have this. If you again you are into Linux, this looks like Linux directories for you. You have init, you have spin, you have proc. So let's examine what we have here now. What we did was we had an image, we found out that it's an Android image. We used a boot image dash X to open it. Then we use gunzip, then we use CPIO. And now you have what your kernel on your Android phone sees when it boots up. In the beginning, I thought maybe my flag is 
hidden in some of these. So on uh, NVIM, I'm using lazy vim. I did a quick search for the uh, BCTF. Nothing. So it's not in the text files, at least in the pure mode. I started checking files one by one. My idea was maybe one executable when ran gives back the uh, flag. But I was wrong. We had a resource here. These were empty, so I only had this S pin, ADB, and other stuff for Android. These are normal. But I had one resource, images, charger, and two files here. If you want to check them, you can go to the resources, images, charger. And as you can see, we have two files here. Battery scale PNG and battery fail PNG. If I open them, as you can see, this is battery scale. Interesting. So your battery scale works like this. And remember, we extracted an Android image. So you can even change this, combine your files into a memory disk, combine it with the kernel Z image. You will have a new Android image, copy it to your phone. Not only copying, you have to write it over your previous one. So take backups, check on the test phone and other stuff. But it's a very fun thing to do. And you will have a new phone. No, you have your old phone with a new battery charging image. What can be cooler than this? And then I open the next one. Battery fail. And this is our flag. As you can see, it's hidden here. BCTF green robot phone. I hope you enjoyed it. Finding the flag was easy for the person who knows what he's doing. Thank you. And the important part is I believe that and the reason I recorded this and I believe that the uh, person who created this challenge, the idea was showing you how easy or at least reachable these kind of stuff are. Now you know how you can extract an Android image, how you can recreate it or create it. At least you know that you can start learning. Hope you enjoy it. We'll provide the flag here and we will get points. Have fun.